Welcome back to another quick look at the Sky Charger that I did a video on last month. I thought I would take a look at the PC software that you can use with the charger. Micro USB, you just plug it in and then connect it to the computer. These are the batteries that I'm going to be using. Try and keep this pretty short and get on with it. First thing to note is that you can't resize the window. It's just under a thousand pixels and it doesn't install. You just run it from the computer. Layout is pretty logical and self-explanatory. You can send to the charger or take the settings from the charger. But what you can't do is save those settings. So I'll just show you on bank one. I've clicked on that and you can pick your battery type. In this case, the nickel metal hydride AAA. So I'll drop the capacity down. That's important because it will actually stop after it's put that amount of capacity into the battery. So remember that. You'll see that when I change the capacity, it changed the charge current. If you click that right hand button with the arrows on it, you'll get the more advanced controls. And this allows you to change things like the uh, termination, the end voltage. You can also change the end current as well. The cycle modes, they're pretty much self-explanatory. C charge, D is discharge, so you can run multiple cycles. And I'll show you an example later on, just doing a discharge capacity test. Pay attention to things like trickle charge, and also the Delta V, quite important on nickel metal hydride. I would not set that too high. Three millivolts is just about right. With the cut time, make sure that's long enough for the battery to charge. I've been caught out a couple of times with that. It's pretty straightforward and not too many complaints in terms of the functionality, but there are a couple of drawbacks I'll talk about later on. I'll just do the number four now, which is lithium ion. That's an 18650 cell. You've got the different chemistries that you can pick. Same sort of thing with the modes. Obviously, some of these modes aren't available, like break-in is only nickel metal hydride. And then what you need to do is send it to the charger. You'll see the dialog come up on the screen. But then you have to go back to the Home tab and then click Start, the Start button. You need to hit that, otherwise it's not going to start the program. Once you've done that, it sends it to the charger. There's a little bit of a delay, maybe five or six seconds, and then it starts to communicate and bring back the data and you'll see the graphs fill up. You have a choice of four on this and they've got different colored coding for each one. So you can have just one or all of them together if you want. Over time that scales automatically so it can all fit onto the graph. Now there is a possibility that if you wanted to take a grab of that, you can do that. So what you need to do is you need to hit the save button and unfortunately there's a bit of a bug with that because it saves it with a black background and you can't really see the text on it. So that's not working great. The save isn't for saving programs unfortunately and that's the biggest complaint that I have. You can't program this and then save the programs that you've done and you can't change any of the charger settings with this software. So it's pretty basic. It does give you full control over the charging process but you'll have to re-enter this every time if you turn the charger off or you turn the computer off or you just close the window on the program. I'm just showing you an example now of using the refresh mode to check the battery capacity. You'll need to set that to around about 2.5 volts on the discharge. Otherwise it won't give you a fully accurate reading. That's for the lithium ion cells. Nickel metal hydride, take them down to around about one volt and that'll give you a accurate capacity test on those. So it's a bit limited really in terms of what you can do with it. I mean, I do occasionally use it, but I generally use the phone app because you have the ability to save programs on that. If you do have a power cut because the USB is providing some voltage, it will start flashing and you'll get an alarm if the system has the beep on. I think Sky could do a lot more with this software, but hopefully that gave you a rough idea of what to expect with it.